Okay, so in this tutorial we're going to be looking at masking using uh, ZBrush. Uh, so the first thing to do is just fire up ZBrush. Um, if you don't want this display here, you can just go to hide. Now what we can do is just load up a basic tool um, for us to work on. So if you just go to load tool and just load demo head, then if you just click and drag in the viewport, then make sure you turn on edit mode. Now you can rotate around. Just hit F to frame if you need to. Now, first thing we're going to do is just add some more points to this because we've only got um, 69,000 points in this at the moment. So if you just come over to the geometry tab and just leave smooth on and just hit divide, just divide twice to get it to say 900,000 points. And we'll just change to matte cap of grey purely for ease of use. Um, I think as well we'll just turn on perspective mode as well. Okay, so we just scroll over here, you see you've got the masking tab here. Now masking essentially lets us um, show or hide or work on just kind of individual elements of our models. Comes in really handy when you've got a kind of more complex mesh. Um, really useful for creating little effects like um, um, strengthening kind of wrinkles and things like that. Uh, so let's just go right ahead and have a quick play with it. If you just hold control on your keyboard, you'll see um, your brush has now changed to mask. And if you just paint anywhere onto your model, you will create a mask. Um, now it's controlled by obviously by your brush size and your focal shift and stuff like that. So just paint the mask on. And as you can see it's also affected by symmetry. Um, so just straight off the bat just try kind of sculpting anywhere on your model and you'll see that the mask area isn't affected but every, everything around it is. So we'll just undo that. Um, so yep you can paint mask straight onto there. Uh, the other way to kind of create a nice easy mask. If we just clear the mask first, uh, first of all you've got a clear area here if you just want to clear it. Um, if we just paint on, if you control click outside the view you can invert the mask or you can use inverse there of course. Um, if you hold control and alt, sorry uh, just hold down control and just left click and drag you'll see that will clear the mask. Okay, so how do we actually kind of hide areas? So let's say we just wanted to work on the face here. If you hold control and shift, then do a selection like so, you'll see we'll now just have the face. You can also see it's taken down the active points as well. So this is really kind of useful if um, you're kind of getting performance issues at all with anything that you're working on. And again if you just hold control and drag outside then you can um, show everything again. Okay so other useful little things, let's say we've hold, hold control and just paint an area on here. What if we wanted to kind of blur that area a bit? Well if you hold control and click in the mask, that will actually blur it. Alternatively, if you hold Control and Shift and click, sorry, Control and Alt and click in the mask, that will sharpen it. Uh, just to show you what we were doing before with kind of hide and show point, um, if you go to visibility here, you also have hide point, so you can hide the area that you've masked. If you go show point, Sorry, high point first, and then do show point. It'll bring back uh, the entire model. So yeah, so kind of really useful for uh, just kind of general um, working on kind of smaller areas and stuff like that. Um, another useful tool. Let's just turn off symmetry. So we go to transform here. We'll turn off symmetry, and we'll just sculpt in like a basic change here. You can see it's still got a bit of the mask here. So if we just clear our mask and then paint just anything anything really just like so 
Now if you hold, we'll go to the front on view, if you hold control and then say mask an area of your model like so, let's say you wanted to have uh, this area appearing exactly as it does on the other side but you haven't um, activated symmetry, you can fix that by doing a mask selection on the area you want to copy. <coughs> Coming over to the deformation tab and hitting smart resim. I might just have to wait for a few seconds. And you can see it's now put that onto the other side as well. So we'll just control and drag outside to wipe that mask again. Um, other interesting things you can do, just to make this a bit faster, I'm just going to reduce my subdivs down by one. You also have a mask by cavity, so if I just hit mask by cavity, it actually creates um, almost like an ambient occlusion layer, like so. And you can also do mask by actual ambient occlusion. We just try that one. And we'll just set that so you can't see it working very well. We'll put our intensity up a bit. There you go, so you can see you can actually get out an ambient occlusion pass like this. This can be really useful actually is um, uh, just for kind of actually generating um, a texture to add into your diffuse layer. And obviously as well, if we now paint around here, we can also bring out those details. Or if we inverted the mask, then we could actually kind of paint in. So, okay, so we just switch back to Mac upgrade. Okay, so other useful little things you can do because you, you do tend to find you use masks quite a lot um, when you've got kind of more complex models. What if you'd created a mask and you wanted to reuse it? Now this might not work too well, it depends if this model has UVs, you, you really need to have UVs, it doesn't matter if they're not great UVs, it's essential, we'll just try it on this anyway. So we've masked an area there and we're thinking, you know, we're probably going to need that again in the future. Okay, so we can actually mask by alpha, now at the moment um, that option is blanked out which means this object doesn't have UVs, so if we just come over to the UV map tab ZBrush does have an auto unwrap, now it's no good really at all, um, as in it couldn't be used as like a game unwrap or in a render or anything, but um, it's for this kind of thing really, just so you've got some random UVs in there, just like flatten mapping in Max basically. So if we just hit AUV tiles, it gives us a warning which says you need to be on your lowest subdiv before you do it, so we'll just go to the lowest subdiv here, we'll do AUV tiles, now if we scroll back up we'll see our alpha tab is now appeared, so we'll just put our subdivs back up to full, and we'll just hit create alpha, and you can see <laughs> it has made an alpha, and obviously that's kind of useless there really, but um, uh, but for these purposes it should work. Okay, so we'll just zoom out, control, and we'll blank our alpha. Okay, so then if you look in our alpha channel, um, you can see it's already loaded it in, but when you've got a bunch of them, they'll all just be listed here. So if you just select the alpha you want, obviously we can't <laughs> tell too much from those terrible UVs. Um, but then when you've got that in your alpha tab, you just hit mask by alpha, and it will recreate your alpha. So that's really useful for when you've spent a while painting up some kind of complex alphas and you want to and you want to reuse them. Uh, so what else can you do with the alpha here? Well, let's say we select something like that, then we hold control, now what we need to do is actually hold control and then select an alpha, so this is actually our mask brush, so with control hold down this is when you can actually change the settings, and we'll just change this to um, drag rect, and then hit control and you can see you can actually do an alpha like so. So this could be useful if you're using like um, 
if you're making some kind of scales or something like that, um, and you want to actually indent them more, you could just use say something like oops, make sure you got control hold down for when you change it. Select that as an alpha. Hold down control and we can mask it in. And then obviously when you're sculpting it will bring out the bits like that. Now one thing to notice with that, just hold control, we're going to go back to this alpha here. If I drag you'll notice how the ends are all blurred. That's because of our focal shift so just try changing your focal shift down to minus 100 and you'll see you get a nice solid alpha there. Try putting it on 100 and you'll see it just does like a really really small one there. So I'll leave it like that for now. Like so, okay so that's kind of all the tools available for masking.